Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for today. I want to take you through the section of uh, Health Nugget. And I'm glad to be invited by my colleague and my friend, uh, Betty Samburu, to discuss with you something to do with cancer and nutrition. So I hope we are going to uh, follow up this session because it is an, a topic that many of you would wish to, to know more about. Um, we, there are so much going on uh, on the area of cancer and there is an area that so many people have not yet uh, understood. That is the relationship between cancer and nutrition or how cancer and nutrition uh, are related. Sorry, I didn't introduce myself. Uh, that's bad manners from my side. My name is Kennedy Okinda, and uh, I'm a registered oncology nutritionist. I work at Kenyatta National Hospital Odaya. That is in Nyeri County. I'm also the head of research and programs there. So I hope one day uh, you will visit there. So today, um, I've been given opportunity to come and take you through what you need to understand in relation to cancer and also in relation to what nutritional or dietary practices that you need to follow in a scenario where you are trying to prevent yourself from getting cancer or you have a relative, a friend, a colleague who already has cancer and is having challenges uh, to, on what to follow because uh, cancer is kind of a, a multi-organ disease that attacks a different body and even the treatment of cancer itself sometimes can be so traumatizing and sometimes can makes uh, recovery become too, uh, very late. So um, what you need to understand is that cancer is a multi-organ uh, disease that affects the body system and uh, it comes about when the normal uh, gene uh, mutation has been affected. Many a times we find that there are an, a normal sequence of cells replicating. But in a scenario where cancer comes in, you find that the cells cannot uh, replicate in the normal way. And when this occurs, you find that your body uh, might not be able to fight certain th those kind of deviances. So, one thing that mostly affects the, the patient with cancer or those who've already gotten cancer is what we term as cancer cachexia. Many a times if you happen to look at a, a person who has been infected with cancer or maybe who is undergoing treatment of cancer, be it chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or even what we call immunotherapy, many a times they are so wasted, okay? Their body weight goes down, so in some situations they are not able to cope up with the treatment. So that is what we term as cancer cachexia. So cancer cachexia is like a multimodular uh, system where the body is, able, is not able to cope up with either the treatment of cancer itself or sometimes is not able to, to fight the disease or the, the treatment that somebody gets. So um, Normally patients or people who experience cancer cachexia have different body uh, issues that they experience. One of those issues that they experience is what we call loss of appetite. They are not able to feed normally as other people. Sometimes they feel what we call nausea and vomiting because of the effect of chemotherapy and also maybe the effect of radiotherapy. 
They also have what we call anorexia. Anorexia is what we call lack of appetite. That is also very common for people undergoing cancer treatment or even people uh, who have cancer and have not yet started treatment. Uh, other thing that they have is what we call dysphagia. They have difficulty in swallowing. Sometimes when patients uh, or clients who are undergoing radiotherapy, the radiations affect the mucus lining of their, of their uh, what we call esophagus. So sometimes they are not able to swallow very well. So those are kind of I, uh, symptoms or signs that this patient or anybody who is undergoing cancer treatment might have. And these ones have nutritional implication to their body and also maybe to cancer treatment. So what do we need to do in such a scenario that we have clients or we have colleagues who are undergoing cancer treatment or who have cancer but are experiencing what we call cancer cachexia? There are so many. This, this kind of management is individualized. You, there is no standardized way of providing nutritional advice or food to a, a given patient. What we normally do, you individualize the care to individual person because each person presents differently. Many a times people ask that what foods do I need to eat in order to either prevent myself from being at risk of getting cancer or for those who are already infected with cancer. There is no standard food that you need to take. However, you have to look at it wholesomely, meaning you have to look at your diet from the recommended, um, what we call seven food groups. And actually, nowadays we are up to 12 food groups in, 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 that has been approved. So um, that is what you need to look into. There are so many questions that people ask pertaining cancer and the food they need to do. The first question that they ask is, which foods are magic to prevent me from having cancer or maybe to help me in treatment of cancer? And the answer is there is no magical food that will help you. However, the researchers have come up with several aspects that you need to understand. The first item is to what we look at. What practices do I need to follow? The first one is you need to limit what we call added sugars. And added sugars are uh, those are food items that we normally take from very highly saturated sugars. Especially we have the sodas, highly processed snack food, and even dessert. These are the kind of high sugary foods that are likely to cause cancer in a way that they provide food for the cancer cells. The question I want to throw to you that I need you to answer in your own time are cancer cells alive cells or dead cells? Hello? Hello? Happy Sabbath? Are cancer cells live or dead cells? They are live cells. So they feed. So the more sugar you pump into your body, the more uh, food they get for their uh, growth. Another area that you need to focus on is you try to avoid refined Carbohydrates, mostly refined carbohydrates are foods which we've removed the outer, outer layer, what we call the fiber part. The reason as to why we encourage that uh, you try to limit or to maybe avoid them if you can, it's because they provide high calories. And the higher the calorie, the higher the weight gain, the higher the risk of getting cancer through the obesity. Another aspect which is so interesting is Avoid overcooked foods. Okay? Research shows that when you cook food higher than the normal temperature that is required, you the food produces a harmful compound, what we term as heterocyclic amines. And the research has connected heterocyclic amines with replication of cancer cells. So um, there are different methods of cooking that might expose you to, pro to produce um, heterocyclic amines. Animal food, high in fat and protein, high processed food produce this harmful compound when subjected to high temperature. Especially the method we are using to 
kutengeneza nyama nyama choma the ideal way it's you nyama choma should be um, kind of prepared in an enclosed steam area but the system we are using currently is we cook nyama choma directly to the heat so through that we produce what we call heterocyclic amines and these have been um, shown to cause cancer so um, other area that you need to look at is vegetables. Vegetables are one of the good foods that we encourage most of the time when we are looking at cancer because of what we call phytochemicals. I think in your free time, you might read about phytochemicals in relation to cancer and also the immune uh, system. Uh, legumes have been shown to be the good also in protecting against cancer. Remember, most of colon cancers occurs because the food stays so, so long in our uh, GIT system. So um, when you bring out the aspect of legumes, legumes are plant proteins. They have higher um, what you call fiber, so they increase the motility of food. The higher the food stays in your system, the higher chances of you having risk of getting colon cancer. Actually, colon cancer has been so much linked with the food time within our system. Green tea, this is so interesting. Um, <laughs> I know from here people are going to start thinking about green tea. So research has also linked uh, green tea uh, uh, to cancer prevention or cancer treatment. This is because they have what we call antiviral, anti-carcinogenic anti effects. So this is something you need to research on. I know some People might uh, love it, but it is something that you can consider. Uh, all the available fruits are all recommended. We have the apple, the blackberry, the garlic, uh, pumpkin, whole grain cereals. Those are the kind of foods you need to do. So I won't give you exactly exact food that you need to take to prevent you or maybe to help you in cancer recovery. But I'll give you the variety so you make choices. As I wind up... Um, I need to explain something about phytochemicals, but I also encourage you when you have your free time, you can have a look at it. So phytochemicals are naturally occurring plant chemicals, provide color, flavor, and odor. So when you go to maybe a supermarket and you find the green color, the, uh, the lycopene, that is the one we see in the tomatoes, those are what we term as phytochemicals. So they influence chemical process in the body, they stimulate immune system, then they also block carcinogenics. Carcinogens are the uh, cancer cells, cancer-causing cells. So the phytochemicals have been shown to uh, help in preventing that. They also prevent DNA and uh, help repair. They reduce what we call oxidative stress. Um, in many a times, you'll have to research something on what we call uh, um, antioxidants. Many a times, cancer occurs when we have free ions in our body that is not oxidized. So antioxidants, example of them are zinc, vitamin A, vitamin D. They help you to oxidize the free ions. Therefore, this will help you from causing cancer. Thank you very much. As I wind up, I need you to take home message that you need to do. Be as lean as possible. 30-minute physical activity every day, avoid sugary food and energy-dense food, limit alcohol, limit salt and processed food, limit red and avoid processed meat, and above all, eat a variety of vegetable fruits and whole grain and legume. Thank you very much. Happy Sabbath. Thank you.